I think so, there's a couple questions here. One is about timing the ramp test, and then one is about modifying your training schedule around it. And, yeah, I like and that. I think both both are both are important and, and warrant some good discussion. Um, to her point that your period changes and, and your symptoms, I'll call them, but I mean, it's just how it is. Uh, it changes as you get older. And so, and certainly for a lot of women, it's the case that kind of the negative impacts of this do become more and more pronounced. Mm -hmm. And the other frustrating part of this is they can also be just different month to month. And that's, mm. you know, regardless of age. Um, so sometimes it's a little bit difficult to predict exactly how you're going to feel. I think the big thing about this is just having an awareness of, of it. And I want to kind of back up to what I said before about the VO2 max for me. It wasn't that I wasn't physically capable of doing it. I could do it. It was just that the RPE was so much higher for me that huh. in working with my coach, we figured out that it wasn't worth it to mm. do the workout on those days because it really messed with my head uh -huh. and would affect the quality of my training downstream. So it was sort of like, okay, for me, it was really my confidence and my mental state were really, really important to my training. And so if – I were a different person and it didn't affect me as much in terms of confidence. And I just knew on that day, the mm. RPE was going to be really high. You know, I could do it. So it mm -hmm. wasn't like any impact on recovery. If you push through it, um, there probably is. And, and that's, that's one of the things that is, um, is, is an, is a potential impact for the high hormone phase, which I'll get to in just a second. And mm. I, I'm not sure, honestly, that I could have decoupled the physical recovery from the mental recovery. <laughs> mm. um, gotcha. That's a good point. Just being honest about that. I mean, yep. probably, I mean, there may have been a physical impact, but I don't know that I could have told you. Okay, Didn't really matter. Right. You, exactly. were, you were down. I was just down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mood is a really, it's really important to training. So Huge. to this, um, whether or not, I think adjusting your FTP, I don't think you need to do that. Uh, number one, I don't think the effect, I mean, the effect feels big sometimes. It can feel really significant, but I don't think that there's any way you could get it right. So if you're adjusting your FTP up or down, like you're never going to just nail it right, you know? So it's going to be within a couple percent. I don't think that that's really going to be uh, the difference. And I want to look at, um, let's just talk about some of, some of what actually happens. So- cool. There are some hormone phase associated symptoms that tend to become more pronounced with age. Um, we talked about that. And then some of the things that can happen in the high hormone phase and the high hormone phase is like, there's just kind of a gradual build of hormone until right before the period. And then it all kind of drops precipitously, which initiates the period. And so, um, what you can see during that high hormone phase with those hormones is that you can see a decrease in plasma volume. So that just means that thermal regulation suffers. Exactly. Thermal regulation suffers, hydration status suffers. So you want to just, you know, there are things you can do to offset this, right? You can increase your electrolyte intake, increase your water intake, just be really on top of your hydration. Um, it does actually increase your core temperature, which may or may not be related to plasma volume, huh. but we do know that core temperature is related to rate of perceived exertion and performance and performance. Mm -hmm. And so if you know that you're starting with a higher core temperature, there are things that you can do, you know, if you're hydrating well, it can help keep that down. If you know that you're going to be training in hot temps, you know, um, maybe an ice vest or, you know, even trying to thermally acclimate you know, ahead of time might mm. help. Um, there's increased sodium loss. So going back to the electrolytes and then progesterone in particular ramps up and that's a, a catabolic uh, hormone, which means that you potentially you're breaking down muscle or at least you're not rebuilding it at the same rate as you normally would. So mm -hmm. your recovery might suffer. And again, these are all pretty minor. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can be more or less significant depending on the month, depending on your age, depending on the individual. So it's more about figuring out what it is that's affecting you. And obviously there's some, kind of something that you can do for each of these. So even with the catabol um, the, the, the increase, the, sorry, the catabolic effect of the progesterone, you can increase your protein intake or maybe take some extra BCAAs. Mm -hmm. um, and Stacy Sims talks about this in her book, Roar. It's a really, really great resource. Mm -hmm. um, as with everything, it doesn't necessarily <coughs> apply to everybody. So you want to try, sure. you know, just see what works for you. Um, but as far as arranging your training plan around your period, if your period is really regular and you, you can, you can predict and plan around it, I don't see any reason not to, especially if you are experiencing really severe symptoms. Um, if, if you are feeling to the point where you feel like you're sick one week out of 
four, then yeah, maybe that's not the time that you want to do your really, you know, breakthrough workouts or the really, really important sets. That's your recovery week. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Making your recovery week. So I I think there's a lot of things that you can do in terms of timing your training. And then a lot of things you can do nutritionally and hydration wise to offset some of these things. Um, And it's just a matter of experimenting and seeing what works for you. And you want to mention in the forum last time, and by the way, I just want to thank everybody for the amazing forum discussion we had it's last pretty time. Pretty great, right? It was so awesome. And yeah. I it it was really cool. And I just I I I always like to tell people to take everything I say with a grain of salt because it doesn't apply to everybody, but it was really fun to hear two from grains people. for me. Like you need two for my <laughs> sayings. <laughs> yeah. It was really fun to hear from people who had tried some of the things and and you know, whether or not it worked for you, I just I, I just love that people try it and see it's it cool. and yeah. share the experience. So yeah. One quick point that I want to make is you know, you said that like these things are minor and and while they may be relatively minor, a cyclist has probably spent thousands of dollars to increase plasma volume, decrease mm-hmm. core temperature, <laughs> right? Increase yeah. our, our sodium retention tension, all these different things. So like, uh, even though they may seem relatively minor, uh, and for cyclists that are chasing marginal gains, like it's absolutely something. So, so adjusting your training, once again, we said this earlier in the podcast, but it's absolutely something we recommend. Oh, yeah. yeah. The adjusting yeah. your training relative to your, your menses, your, your cycle. Do it. hundred percent. Yep. Yep. And in terms worrying of worrying about the FTP test, however. Yeah. I was just going to go there. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Right. It's, yeah. it's really not like, uh, I, we fall, we all fall into this trap. Um, and, and we basically think like, I need to have a perfect day on my ramp test day. Right. Which right? I'm here yeah. to tell you is about the worst thing you can do to yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, your best day ever is where you set your benchmark. That's yeah. pretty tough. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and we have this kind of mindset that like, you know, everything needs to be perfect for that. But think of your, think of your average, uh, in the sense that like, as you carry on through three weeks of training, uh, where life stress and everything else else puts you in terms of performance potential Mm -hmm. and that's where you should be and i know the reason that we don't want to do this is because we attach our self-worth to to numbers right whether it's whether it's a race result or whether it's an ftp value or whether it's any number of different things that we can measure about ourselves honestly we tend to do that just you know ditch your ego Mm-hmm. and see it as another workout. Exactly. It's yeah. a data point. It's just a data point. And every data point, every piece of data that we bring, and nothing's actually, you know, I mean, it's mm-hmm. all plus or minus within some band of error. Totally. Like, yeah. so, so you're basically, it, it's a guide. It's not a definitive definition of you mm-hmm. know, who you are as an athlete or who you are as a person. It's a good point of reference. And I, I also want to clarify, I mean, this isn't necessarily minor for some people. For some people, you know, the cramps that you can get are honestly debilitating. And I yep. do know some athletes, some of my teammates at Stanford on the swim team could not physically train. I mean, they would right. they would be like curled in the fetal position. I mean, it was but, so yeah. bad. So so for some people it's not it's it can be extremely significant. Um, but in terms of your performance, if you're not, you know, physically debilitated by cramps, um, I, I want to say that it's not, it can be minor in relation to other things that are influencing your performance. Totally. So if you have other life stresses going on, if you're not getting good sleep, I mean, there's a lot of other things that can affect your performance. And one of the questions I got in the forum last time was like, what did you do as a pro? I mean, did you just not race on those days yeah. when you felt so bad? And no, absolutely not. I mean, you never show up to the start of a race at hundred percent anyway. And the effect that my hormone phase would have on my performance was for the most part, relatively minor compared to, you know, did I crash the day before or, you know, Mm -hmm. am I overreaching at this stage of my training? I mean, there's a lot of other things that can play into this. So I think it's important to be aware of it, to notice it, to figure out how it's influencing you and how, you know, whether Mm -hmm. some of these mitigation strategies can work for you. But I don't think it's something to like really, really fixate on any more than other aspects of what's going into your performance. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, cool. I think that, uh, that one's more or less covered. Can we move into some, uh, yeah, fantastic. Uh, Chad and I can't say a lot of those things. We can't say like, just, (laughs) just train through. That's so (laughs) really glad you're here. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Huh? If you like that video, check out these playlists for more of the same and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to become a faster cyclist, head over to trainerroad.com. That's what I'm going to do right now.